So second half is is now underway here. Oh, a great shot there from Baldo Anderson from about 20 yards. As the number one, Matthias Gruber scrambling across the goal. Push that into touch. Let's hope that's a sign of intent from BVI. Because you might hear in the background, the spectators here a bit disappointed. BVI are not ahead in this game. A bit disappointed they're not ahead. They've created the most opportunities, got the best team, but haven't scored. Let's see what they can do now. So, corner kick coming in. Comes to Valdo Anderson, but it's cleared away. The Swiss look like they're going to continue playing their defensive strategy. The ball picked up num by number 10 there. Fitzroy Daly, a nice turn. He moves across the field. He makes himself time. And yes, the Swiss have lined up again, 4-4-2, in their defensive formation. So they're going to be looking for something on the breakaway and then, and then defending in depth, it seems. Valdo Anderson comes across. But the ball runs loose and is picked up by Leash City. And they try to build up a play here with number nine coming wide. It's their main striker. Um, Remo Gertler. So free kick. And who's going to take it? It looks like number two for Leash City. That is Jean Otto. Lining it up, BVI getting their defence into place. They've got how many people in the wall? The referee marking out the 10 yards from the ball. When you get a free kick uh, against you, the opposing... T sorry, when you get a free kick, the opposing team has to move 10 yards away to give you an opportunity to kick the ball into the danger area. So number two here, Jean Ott, looking to hit, hit the ball to the far side, which he does do. And uh, somebody comes in, tries a header, but heads wide. That's the most dangerous that they've looked. They've looked during the whole game. So is this going to be a game of uh, dead ball situations? Let's hope BVI can create something. They need to pick up the pace. If they pick up the pace and the intensity, then the Swiss are going to find it very hard to live with them. Number 17 there for BVI, getting in to win the ball. Francis Primo wins the ball and kicks, plays it away into touch. Now Leash City got players forward, that's good news. Uh, but Mr. Freck collects the ball, comfortably he's now looking downfield. He normally plays it short, but he's actually going to kick long, and he kicks long. Um, it's headed by the Swiss player, but Trevor Peters is across very quickly. And a nice touch from him. Valdo Anderson plays a long diagonal. And it's Jamie Brown in behind. Crosses the ball in front of goal. There's nobody there. Another opportunity for BVI. Getting in behind the defence, but then can't, can't take advantage of it. Looking dangerous. So a corner kick over here again for BVI. BVI immediately putting pressure on. Let's hope they can get something from this. So let's see who this is coming across to take it. It looks to me like, oh, there's jostling going on in the goal mouth. We think this was a European Champions League game. A referee puts a stop to it. So number 10 there for BVI about to take the corner. Fitzroy Daly. Look at those players that are congregated in the goal mouth. About, about 15 players, I think. Um, ball comes in for Fitzroy Daly. BVI gets to it. Can they put it in? No, no, no. Cleared away. It looked for a minute as BVI were actually going to get a shot on goal. BVI regained possession. Been story of the night. Uh, the Swiss struggling to keep possession. Number 44, he must have come on at half time. That uh, Trillo Mingo. Oh, very Caribbean name. Mango. Uh, BVI now have a throw. 
I don't know. A little bit of. Uh, oh, we got a substitution happening here. Uh, it looks like it's um, number four. Is it Chris Telemark going off? And who do we have coming on? Anyway, number 10 about to take the throw, which is Fitzroy Daly, plays the ball in. Number 13 for that very dependable defender, Fock, clears the ball out. One of the players gets hurt there, referee gives a free kick. That's Faldo Anderson giving away that free kick, BVI now dropping back. Michael Vock looking to take it. He actually takes it short, that's unusual. He normally hits a high one forward. Number 12 here is Flory and Molda bringing the ball forward. Can they keep possession? Plays a nice ball into the number nine. It, he's, he's very wide though. And hits a ball to the far post, but there's nobody coming in. So it seems that uh, the Swiss have gained some confidence over the half-time break and uh, getting more players forward. We go with that patient build-up, which coach Avondale Williams will be pleased with to see the players not panicking and looking to play too many early balls, looking to keep possession and be confident on the ball. The ball bouncing around in midfield between the two teams and now the number nine tries a strike and actually doesn't go far away. Remo Gertland. There's some discussion going on in the BBI team. What they're saying is that they weren't um, solid enough in midfield. When you lose possession you're supposed to drop back and pressurise and it didn't happen that time which is why the number nine Grubler was able to get that um, Remo Gertler was able to get that um, shot in and uh, good job it wasn't on target because I get a feeling that Mr Frett wouldn't have got to that BVI looking a bit disjointed now I have to say number two that has come on is Christian Javier so he's come across to play on the right-hand side of midfield. Uh, Swiss putting the pressure on her. Huh? Number four hits it forward. Oh, it's a poor ball. Must have caught a BVI player because it's gone out. It's gone out for a corner. So now uh, the Swiss's second corner of the game. I, I would think that's number two. Jan Otto has come across to take it. Ball comes in. Where's the goalkeeper's catch? Is it a good catch there from, from the BVI number one? Unfortunately, BVI now regain possession. They're going through a bit of a slack spell, the BVI. It looks like they're taking the game a bit easier. But here's... The referee gives a decision which it's not a, the bench over there don't agree with that. Uh, it's a good job that happened from the Swiss point of view because Trevor Peters was in behind the defence. That was a dangerous situation. So they were fortunate to get away with that. So it does look as if the Swiss are actually trying to attack more in this half. Um, that's a good sign because maybe the game will be more open and we'll see more excitement. So because Quaver Fret kicks it forward. Loses the PVI lose possession. They get it back on there straight away. Their superior technique allows them to retain control of the ball more. And now in goes number two, Christian Xavier. He wins it. Oh, a nice little touch over the defender there. Nice skill. Oh, Valdo Anderson takes a shot but misses the ball completely. My goodness. Yes, a bit of a late tackle there from their captain uh, of the Swiss team, Hutch Studer. And number five for BVI is feeling that tackle. Uh, Jamal Sargent is down on the ground. 
got a knock on his shin by the look of it. So PVI lining the free kick up, they're about 30 yards out. Not sure who's going to take it, it could be Valdo Anderson, it could be Trevor Peters. Oh, a shot on goal from number 17 there, a good effort from Francis Primo. For the goalkeeper, they've got their substitute goalkeeper on now. Um, who is Florian Walder? Is it Florian Walder? No, I don't think it is. It's number 22, Kevin Kuntz. Or Kuntz, probably. So he's on for the second half, so they've made quite a few changes, the, uh, the Swiss. And B BBI looking a bit lethargic at the moment. I'd like to see them pick up the pace of the game and get some more pressure on. I think they, the amount of possession they had in the first half has sort of lulled them into a false sense of security. And uh, if they're not careful, they can get caught on the break. Um, and a long ball forward here from Albert. Now, here's Valdo Anderson. Can BVI make some things? He's a skillful player. Plays the ball out wide. That's Andy Davis. Early ball in. Early, but in. oh, the goalkeeper's out just in front of. Just in front of um, number 13 there. I think that was um, Jamie Brown. So BVI now back on the attack with a throw in down the far side from Andy Davis. And now hopefully BVI picking up the pace again and putting some more intensity into it. A long ball back just to keep possession and move the point of attack over to this side of the field. Now Andy Davis has gone back, picking the ball up there, looking for an opportunity bring it forward the game a bit scrappy at the moment I have to say not um, too much excitement from either team um, the BVI as I say look a bit lethargic and as a result of that the game seems to have gone a little bit flat uh, we need the BVI to pick up the pace and pick up the intensity and keep plugging away because as the Swiss team have been defending most of the game, if they have to defend for most of the second half, there'll be opportunities for BVI. Anyway, Swiss, oh, a dreadful pass there. Uh, that was a poor decision from the assistant referee. The player ran from an onside position, but he flagged for offside. Uh, Trevor Peters was in an offside position, but uh, he didn't touch the ball. Anyway, we can always second-guess the officials. It's part of the fun of the game. Yeah, so the, uh, I must say, Swiss team have come out this half. They're looking much more positive. They look to me like they've decided, well, let's have a go. Let's see if we can get a goal, because um, maybe they feel if they can get a goal, then uh, they... Oh! Bad mistake from BVI there, number five. His, his touch was poor and it came down to um, number nine, uh, Struder, who didn't, uh, didn't make anything of it. But number five there for BVI, Jamar Sardin, not very happy with himself, I wouldn't think. So some substitutions going on, number 11 going off for uh, Leash City, that's um, Alan Zool. And I also saw a BVI player going off over the far side. I'm not sure who's coming on, but I'm sure we'll pick it up quite quickly. Yes, the crowd is building up now. Uh, the Swiss are certainly uh, a bit noisier than they were before. They too can sense that their team is um, looking to get some players forward and score. Now here's BVI, number two, Javier Christoph Christian. Um, on the 
right hand side number 10 here Fitzroy Davy playing on the right hand side of the defense more in attacking position let's hope BVI it. Oh, that's what they call a professional foul <laughs> Christian uh, Xavier was pulled down there by the number 12 for Leash City he grabbed him by the waist and pulled him down Florian Wilder and I would say he was lucky to get away without a yellow card a yellow card is when you commit a, an offence but it's not significant enough for you to be sent off the field which is a red card but you get a yellow card for something like that and then if you do it again you get another yellow card you would actually go off so it's um, because that obviously would have been a deliberate um, play so here's the Swiss looking to break out oh a poor ball forward for the number eight they were getting players forward and um, he overhit it that's David Birch in the coach and BBI starting to build again Ball played forward to Waldo Anderson, down, number five, uh, 30. Oh, that's a lovely ball from number 30. Inside the fullback, ball comes across it, but it's overhit. Ball was overhit there, that's unfortunate because that was a good break from the BBI. That's what we want to see. An early ball forward and use the pace of the forwards. Uh, throw in now number 12, 12 Walder taking it not quite sure what the hold are oh, there substitutions going on uh, number 5 Jamal Sargent is going off I'll try and get the name of the player coming on as soon as I can see his number. With the lights on, it's difficult to see numbers when you when you're of a certain age. So I think it's number 14 that's come on, which will be Andreas Norford. So a long ball forward, but BVI defence is there and, and cleans up quite comfortably. There's number 17 out there. He's pulled down by the defender who quickly runs off before he gets the other card. That's Francis Pino. So BVI now attacking. A dead, a dead ball situation. Uh, that's cleared by the defence of Leash City. BVI trying to build something up. And, uh, yes. They got the ball in behind the defence, but again, when the ball came across into the centre. Now, I do believe that number 26 has come on. Yes, the president of Leash City, Simon Wall, has come on for a run out. That's interesting. He didn't play at all on Wednesday. He obviously figures uh, he wants to have some uh, experience playing in the BBI before he goes back to Switzerland. Uh, Simon has been Simon Wall has been the, the person responsible for um, coordinating the trip from the Swiss point of view. The BBI is starting to push push up now, starting to create some pressure. Let's see if they can get a goal. Number two, Christian Xavier gets up, but he just nods it away from the corner. So goalkeeper number 22, Kevin Coons, places the ball and, and looks long. BVI are in first. Simon obviously didn't fancy jumping for that one. <laughs> Can BVI create something? What I did like in the first half was the um, on the two sides, Chris Telemark on the right and Jamie Brown on the left were causing a lot of problems with their speed. And both of those players have been substituted, so now the 
you've got a change in tactic really in the BVI and now putting more balls into the penalty area from the central area with direct balls rather than trying to create plays in behind the defence. Nice little turn there by Simon Wall, the president of uh, Leash City. Um, tried to play in the number nine behind the BVI defence. That's their, that's their one of their leading players, but um, he didn't realise how much faster the BVI team are. It's been very difficult for the Swiss to get in behind the BVI defence. So anyway, they've been given a free kick. The referee's given them a free kick. This and the chance to exert some pressure. Let's hope BVI can sustain this. Oh, unfortunately, a very poor free kick straight into the arms of the goalkeeper. Yeah, Remo Gertler is the number nine the striker. I suddenly realise I have the ages of the players here, but I don't know whether I should be making that public. The Swiss players, that is, not the BVI players. Most of the BVI players are, are young players, some under the age of 20, some in the, uh, their early 20s, whereas the Swiss team tend to be older. Quite a few players in their middle to late 30s. In fact, the majority of them looking down at the team list. It's probably why they're so resilient at the back, because they've got a lot of experience. But kudos to them. I mean, they've, they've worked really hard and they've stayed in the game playing against a much younger BDI team. Number 10 fashioned an opportunity for himself. Uh, that's the captain, Studa, but he, uh, Thomas Albert was quickly quickly there to block his shot and it run, runs out for a throw-in. So we now have a throw-in to the Swiss team. So we have a change of circumstance really now. It's the Swiss team that are doing more of the pressing and the BVI team having to defend. I do defend it and the ball goes out on the far side so another throw in which will be taken by the number 14 of the Swiss team uh, Prince Herman a long ball forward from the forward unable to get there so it goes for a BDI free kick So free kick for the BVI team, short ball from uh, goalkeeper Fret to the right player. Um, 16 plays it forward to Javier Christian. He's getting, uh, it's certainly not getting past the number 12. Number 12, uh, Florian Welder is doing a good job on uh, Christian. He's not getting past. Whereas when we had um, Chris Telemark out here, he was causing all kinds of problems for the defenders with his pace and his trickery. Uh, a nice one too. Uh, BVI trying to gain possession of it. Thomas Albert brings it down. 17 plays the cross. That's, that's his primo. BVI now looking to build from the back. Uh, and Andy Davis gets forward, gets the ball gives the ball away unfortunately and Swiss gain possession. Swiss definitely looking more comfortable in this half. They're actually keeping possession of the ball, which they weren't doing in the first half. Um, and attacking there down, that's Simon Well down the right-hand side. But um, not sure what the referee blew for there, whether, whether it was offside or whether it was a free kick. Anyway, we have another substitution coming by the look of it. A Swiss player coming on. Number eight going off, that's the, the, the coach, David Burgeon, going off. Um, he's looked a decent player, but he's been looking tired in the last 10 or 15 minutes. And let's see who we have coming on here. Number 
number 13 has come on slotted straight into his role on the left side of mid midfield that's the Jean Miller Jean Trevor Peters out here wide on the right number 10 Struber robbed uh, number 14 of the BBI Andreas Norford I think he, in my opinion, he was a bit lucky to get a free kick for that because the Swiss player did play the ball. So we're now moving probably into the last 20-25 uh, minutes of this game and it's up for grabs. Either of these teams could win it. Oh, a lovely shot coming in from the BVI. Uh, ball goes wide on the right-hand side. That was number 13. He turned on the edge of the penalty area, Jamie Brown, and shot the ball past the post. I'd like, to, I'd like to see Jamie Brown back on the uh, the right hand side of the, the attacking trio because he was very very dangerous in the first half. So free kick to the um, Swiss team and we've got another substitution coming up from the BBI. Number uh, looks like number 13, Jamie Brown, is going off. Uh, I'm not sure who we have coming on. I'll try and get that name to you as soon as I can. So this is um, pre kick for Leash City being taken by uh, what? BB, BBI defence up very quickly. Just a long hit forward from the defender. No purpose to it really. He just hit the ball forward to get it out of defence and it went into touch. Michael Vock. But I must say BVI have gone off the boil uh, from being a much the much stronger much stronger side. They appeal for a, uh, they appeal for a penalty. The referee doesn't give it. He gives a goal kick instead. He was, he was much closer to the play than we were up here. But I must say, from where I was, it did look as if it could have been a penalty. So the pressure now coming from the Swiss. They're looking to win this game. It's their third or fourth corner now ball comes in a long ball to the back is the goalkeeper going to get it he does he he palms the ball down it was played by a um, Leaf City player but to no to no effect and BBI get it away over here on the right hand side Trevor Peters I think that was doing his job as a defender getting the ball away And number 12, Volda for uh, Leash City. Throws the ball in, they lose possession. Uh, uh, number, number five, um, Cock. He's played, a, played well in both the games. He's been very strong and dependable there in defence. He's good in the air. And uh, as they say, doesn't take any prisoners. Which means he tackles hard and effectively. His distribution is not that good, but uh, he's a very effective defender. Yes, BVI lacking some direction. They need to get some enthusiasm back into the game. Offside decision there against um, Trevor Peters. I think it was, that, was, that was borderline offside. No, Xavier Christian, or Christian Xavier. With the substitutions, they've had the BVI not looking as fluent as they were previously. And uh, the Swiss starting to do something. The ball bobbling around in there. That was Simon Wilde put the ball in the net, but he was slightly offside. Boy, he would have been excited if that one had counted. I'm sure he'd be telling me about that later.
Come on, we want a goal here. We need a goal to liven this game up. Mm -hmm. Right now, B BVI not doing very much at all. And the game has become scrappy, and in fact, if anything, the Swiss team are on top. Let's see what they can do, nothing much. The key players of BVI being Valvo Anderson and Trevor Peters not getting in the game at the moment. And I think that's probably part of the problem. And as I say, when Chris Telemark and um, Jamie Brown were on, they were causing a lot of problems for the Swiss defenders with their speed and their trickery, and they've gone off. And uh, as, as, that, as a result of that, the BBI are nothing like as threatening as they were. And number 10 there, uh, that's why David gives possession of the ball away. But he does win it back. He looks for Christian Xavier, who's, who's moved over to an internal position. But number 14 is across very decisively for Leash City. That's Prince Herman and, and hits the ball up into touch and away. So now BVI attacking down the left-hand side. That's Andy Davis over there, throws the ball in. Uh, Valdo Anderson tries to slip around a couple of players. He gets past one, but not the second. Um, BVI had attempted to keep the pressure on, but um, Leash City got their tails up. They've been doing pretty well, and suddenly they start to believe in themselves. The president of the team, Simon Wall, is on the field. He had a goal disallowed a short while ago for offside, so BVI were fortunate that that one didn't count. Oh, now Javier Christian, a good shot from the edge of the area. The ball ricocheted around, landed at his feet. He got a good shot in. Unfortunately, went straight to the goalkeeper. I wonder if that will lift the BVI team and uh, give them a bit more intensity. So now we have a free kick. Um, sorry, a goal kick for BVI. So that's a long... Simon Well hit a long ball forward. Oh, we've got another substitution coming up for the BVI. Not sure who's coming on. I'll try and get that name to you. Uh, who's going off? Trevor Peters going off, number 16. Um, Trevor is at college in Kansas and has been doing well, but tonight he hasn't had much luck in front of goal. He's worked hard uh, without looking very dangerous, I must, uh, I must say. But one thing's for sure, is the Swiss team have, have fought very hard, both on Wednesday in Virgin Gorda and here. They, even though they were out, they've been outplayed it for quite long spells, in, certainly on Wednesday and also in the first half in, in this game, they've never given up. Uh, referee, get, referee gives a free kick there for Leash City. BVI players not very happy about that, but... Uh, Number 13 from Leash City. Who is um, Jean Miller? Certainly rolled around a lot. So he was so a long ball into the area to straight into the hands of Mr. Fret. He's under no pressure. So BVI now back onto the attack. Let's see what they can do. A long, long ball forward. Goalkeeper just gathers very, very easily. Um, it's chased down by uh, Christian Xavier. But nothing very much happening there. Now this is um, a nice bit of play from Norcroft. Norford rather, Andreas Norford. But he loses possession and the Swiss come back again, but BVI defence stays solid. Uh, bringing it out. Somebody over the far side there for BVI tries a spectacular bicycle kick. It doesn't come off. But BVI regain possession. Ball bouncing around a little bit. As I said, the play's certainly become untidy this half. I'd like to have seen BVI get a goal because I think it would enable them to pick their pace of their, pace of their game up. Handball against the Swiss team there. And a free kick be taken by um, Thomas Albert, I think. Hits a ball, long ball in. 
That was disappointing. Absolutely nobody there. It's wide of the goal. Uh, complete waste of that opportunity. And now the uh, goalkeeper kicks long. Uh, BVI defender comes in, gets pushed off the ball slightly. Anyway, ball ricochets around. It really sums up this half. This half has been untidy with not too much uh, good football. That's a long kick forward. Looks like Anderson was pushed in the back there, but uh, the three now play to continue. Uh, Swiss trying to play the ball forward. They lose possession. Uh, BVI trying to tidy the game up a bit by keeping possession of the ball and moving it forward. Uh, Anderson with it. Probably the most skilled player. Number two, Christian Xavier was claiming his shirt was pulled. Certainly did look like something went on, but uh, referee Alfred Reed didn't see it, so that's, so that's that. The play continues. BVI starting to pick up their game a bit. And a uh, little bit of play over here. Number 13 gets her, throws the ball in. And the Swiss team certainly enjoying a lot more possession than they did in the in the first half. Um, BVI have gone off the boil, that's for sure. Uh, they look nothing like as fluent as they were in the first half. They were clearly the better side in the first half. I couldn't say that now in the second half. So a good comeback from the Swiss. And another substitution going on. I think that's... Uh, very tall player coming on for the BBI. I think that's probably Trevor Ellis, number 19, coming on. I met him earlier, he's about six foot three, so he's, if they can get the high balls into him, he could be dangerous. And who's gone off? Yes, Trevor Ellis has gone off. He's a big, strong forward. Let's see if that's going to make any difference. Uh, some, some scruffy pay over on the far side. BVI have a throw in. Let's hope they can do something. I must say both teams do actually now look a little bit tired and lethargic. Maybe that's because they... There was a lot of intensity in that game on Wednesday night. Or maybe it's because they were in the village last night at the festival. This looks like it's going to be a long throw. That long throw coming right into the penalty area. And there's Ellis. Aim for his head and he got to it. But unfortunately it went up and over. He got too much of a touch on it. If he'd have just let that slide off his head, that might have gone into the net. But he... Uh, he met it too sweetly and it was uh, went across uh, went over the bar so the Swiss bring it Swiss bring it forward uh, they're looking now as if they're quite happy to settle for a draw which I think from their point of view would almost be a form of a victory here goes Waldo Anderson uh, he stayed on his feet if he'd have been a professional footballer he'd have fallen down and probably got a penalty but he stayed on his feet hoping to get the ball into the center Goalkeeper had given it away to him. Anyway, goalkeeper kicking for Leash City. Long ball down to the centre. Um, BVI eventually get it. There's Simon, the, the president of um, of Leash City. Looks like he's got knocked out. Knocked out. Uh, there was a collision there with the number 14 of the BVI team. A number 14 and looks like he's taken a knock to his head let's hope that's not uh, let's hope he's oh he's getting back to his feet but he certainly does look groggy 
He does not look. Uh, he does not look well, does he? That was a collision there of heads, I think. And the BVI doctor comes on to have a look at him. Uh, that's good. He looks groggy, doesn't he? It looks to me like uh, he's taken a knock. There's no way he can continue. He can't, look, he's um, having to be helped from the field. He looks like he's he's been knocked out. And they're helping him off over the far side. He's walking a little bit more easily now. Um, but it does look as if he's dazed. So a hold up in play here. And BVI and Leash City are taking an opportunity by bringing on different players. Coming on for Leash City's number four. Uh, Jesus Willy. And he fulfills that role. He has long flowing locks and a big bushy beard. And is named Jesus Willy. He's certainly a character. He played, he started in the first game. And worked, and worked really, really hard. Uh, and Simon receiving attention over the far side. It looks like he's dazed and uh, people are a little concerned about him. I hope he's not, um, he's not badly hurt. Uh, what happened there was it was uh, the referee gave a, a bounce ball um, because the um, the player because Leash City were in in possession when the referee stopped the game for that injury to Simon Wall uh, the BVI gave the ball back to Leash City so there's a good sport sportsmanship from the BVI team I think that sums up the um, the good the good natured feeling between the, the two teams. It's they're both games have been hard fought, but there's there's been uh, they've been very competitive. But the, both teams have uh, played very openly and transparently, and there's as a result of that, there's no there's been no bad feeling or bad tackles. So, um, at least City in control and. A bit of a Mr. Woolley tried to get the ball but couldn't control it, and uh, Thomas Albert came in. The referee thought that was a that was a free kick, and I see the Leash City. Oh, Simon Wall is still down over the far side there, lying on the ground. I see them taking ice over to him. I think he must have got a bad knock on the on the head because he, he really does look dazed. Anyway. Um, Number two for Leash City is lining it up. That's uh, Jean Ott. And let's see if they're going to do anything. Oh, he overhits the... Oh, no! Oh, no, the BVI goalkeeper drops the ball right in front of the forward. What a ridiculous thing to do. Oh, what a bad, bad mistake that is. It was a nothing free kick straight into his arms. He caught it in his arms and then he dropped it. What a, what a bad mistake. <laughs> anyway, so BBI only got a few minutes to do something about this. It's, um, as I said, they were by far the better team in the first half, the BVI, but didn't score. And now they've given away a, a goal from nowhere. And will they have time to get it back? Let's see, BVI just about to kick off again. I see number 12 on for the BVI, which is Devon Bedford. So we've got quite a few new players on the field, which probably explains the, um, the lack of fluency. Once you start making a lot of substitutions, you lose, your, uh, you lose the pattern. The Swiss are now 
are just going to sit back and defend, you know that. Uh, they've done that for most of the game, now they've got a goal. Um, it's very difficult to see them actually doing it. Oh, here they are coming forward, they're actually getting players forward. Uh, a very, very speculative shot from number 13 there, Jen Miller. BBI paying the price for creating quite a few opportunities but not taking advantage of them. No point creating opportunities if you're not going to put the ball in the net. The Swiss have had an almost next to no opportunities and <laughs> they put the ball in the net. They're now playing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight players back in the defence. So it's, it is going to be difficult for BVI to break down their defence. So at least they came out and looked positive in the second half. So throw in there for BVI. Ball gets knocked out of play by the Swiss. So BVI move forward a few yards. Obviously hoping to get something from the game. So guy taking the throw in on the far side looking for Trevor Ellis he doesn't get anywhere near it uh, ball played across here to Thomas Albert for the Swiss now defending now they're ahead they're defending with a purpose and number 15 John Samuel sees on to the BVI in the right back position the Swiss throw it in, BVI get possession, Swiss just content to play the ball forward and waste time. Supporters now making noise dancing up and down, we didn't hear from them in the first half but they're certainly happy now they're ahead. And to be honest it's very difficult seeing BVI getting back into this game, they've made a number of substitutions and they haven't looked remotely like scoring in the last 15 minutes. So I guess they've missed their coach Avondale Williams. He's normally there on the touchline to... Actually I do see him over there. So he has eventually come. No it's not Avondale Williams, sorry. That's He's obviously not available this evening. Swiss now defending as if their life depended on it. Obviously hoping to take back a win. So BVI take the throw in on the far side. It comes across to Thomas Albert. Sorry, sorry, Thomas Albert on this side. And the Swiss have won it. A dreadful mistake from the BVI goalkeeper. Dreadful mistake. Anyway, that's the end of their tour. They're, they're going to be happy with that result. You can see them jumping up and dancing to the music. I'm sure they'll be over now, heading over to the village later to celebrate. So here we are, the uh, game has ended in the, um, the AO Shirley, the Swiss have come away with a Swiss team, Leach City have come away with a 1-0 win. Uh, uh, with the BVI team, much the better team in the first half, but didn't score any goals. And quite frankly they were very, they just didn't get in didn't get in the game in the second half. So in football you get what you deserve. So signing off, this is Andy Pickerton, President of the BIFA, signing off from the, for JTV at the AO Shirley Recreation Ground Saturday evening. 
final game of the uh, Leash City and Switzerland's Rockwood Tour here in the BBI.